I remember reading my victim impact statement and my dad closed his eyes and leaned his head back. My victim impact statement reads as the following. I had this dream where we were floating in the ocean, pulling all the unwanted things out through our mouths. Our house was bobbing up and down in the water. We lifted our faces to taste the rain. We were wearing white t-shirts and they stuck to our bodies as if we were burning hot with electricity. You grabbed my face with both hands and said, I can't rescue you even if I wanted to. You have deadened my heart. Your ghost haunts me, watching over my life, planning to do harm. You taught me that my body does not belong to me, it is saved for the grave. You've uprooted the memory of God and shown me that there is no heaven, only flames of fire. Like a lion, you hunted me. May you perish from the lack of prey. May your teeth be broken. Whosoever diggeth the pit shall fall in it. Afterwards, I overdosed. I took all my medications at once. I woke up in the hospital four days later trying to stick a fork from my lunch tray into an outlet. I threw a couch when the cops were called. I told them, you can't go to jail for throwing a couch. They told me, you'll never be a grown up. The cops made me go to the hospital. I went to the hospital and signed myself out as Judas. It was a rainy day in February when I drove to the police station. I sat in front of the recorder with the officer, recounting every detail I could. My dad used to make videos with me when I was young. He'd take me out to my grandma's farm and record me with my grandpa's camcorder. He'd give me the videos to watch. The first video he ever gave to me had a family of beavers collecting wood underneath the old cabin, and then it cut to him masturbating. I used to imagine myself as one of those beavers, submerging myself in the cool mud, completely covered, hidden. I could feel the weight of the mud on my closed eyes, and I could breathe again. In my bad dreams, my dad resembles a serpent, for he introduced to the world what most prophets do distribution of a controlled substance to a person under the age of 18. Even in his molten image, he still carried my underwear in his coat pocket. Do you feel like hurting yourself? The psychiatrist asked. Will you commit to safety? I was voluntarily committed to a psych ward when I was 24, and I met a girl there, a girl with yellow hair. She was caught spreading her own blood on the walls of her house. She said it made her feel aroused. <laughs> She told me she was writing about me in her diary, and I ate her vegetarian meals at lunch and dinner. She called me her hungry bear. Her name was Flower, and she covered my feet at night. She told me she was going to adopt me. Flower and I would play cards and laugh so hard some lady took a shit on the floor and it wasn't a mystery who did it either. She left a trail straight to her room. <laughs> we played cards with this guy whose name we could never remember, so we called him Cletus. We would write songs about boners, and she would perform them for everyone. She walked into the day room with her hot pink bra on the outside of her shirt. The guy who had a cat in his trash can walked out of the room. I'm not God, not Jesus, but I can see for miles, she said.